Good morning and welcome to the Abundant Love live stream. I am your mediator, Elder Robert Bush, and we would like to welcome you into the Abundant Love family. Right now, we would like to have our call to worship with Evangelist Cynthia Franks. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Jesus, can you put your hands together and let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. For I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. For he has done great things. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Oh. Father, as we come before you once again, we just want to say thank you for allowing us another day. We thank you for waking us this morning, keeping us in our right mind, giving us the use of our limbs, and allowing us into your house of worship. We just come to lift you up and magnify your name. We come to give you praise, honor, and glory. We pray that you would continue to keep your protective arms stretched out around us that you guard us, continue to show us and guide us the way. 
we pray now that you would watch over this city. Help us as we go through our struggling times. I pray that you would watch over the Ukrainian people, that you continue to bless the nations and the countries that are surrounding them, banding together to help them in their times of struggle. Bless the Haitian people as they're going through their own situation. Restore peace to those regions. Bring those people back and help them to recover what they have lost. As only you can. You have all power and you have the last say so over every situation that we face. We turn to you because we know that we can trust you. We put our trust in you. We honor you because we know that you are our way out. Now we pray that you would go forward into this service, that you be in our midst, continue to pour your blessings out on us, continue to keep your safety arm around us, hedge us in, shelter us, continue to lead and guide us, that we may bring you the honor and the glory that you deserve in all ways, forms, and fashions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we'll have our scripture reading by Elder Chris Habaker. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. How many of y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Well, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our scripture reading is going to be coming from Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 6 and 7. And then we're going to go to Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 12 and 13. Once again, the first two is Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. And when you have it, say amen. Um, we're going to read in course. We're going to pause at the commas and stop at the periods. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 and it reads, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Church. Amen. Y'all going to read with me this morning? Amen. Let's start again. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. Together. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 and 13. I'll give you a second to get there. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12, together. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. 13. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. We have read Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7, and Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all, the doers of his word. We're now in the hands of our announce. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. We would like to thank all of the viewers for tuning in this morning and thank you guys for pressing your way through for our morning worship this morning our live streams are open as you know we're still observing social distancing and we do require temperature checks at the door for your safety as well as others for the month of january we have been studying seek the lord 
And this comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7, as well as Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13. Now, if you would like to be included on our email list, you can leave a comment below for those that's tuning in on Facebook um, with your email address, or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com to receive uh, outlines for the following um, theme that we're going over this month. Amen. Communion will be served today, and Pastor will also be giving instructions for our 20-day consecration. For our sick and recovering, we're going to continue to pray for Reverend Philip and Flora Johnson, Diane Bush, Travion Hilliard, Rayfield Martin, Elder Robert Bush, Minister Winston Pearson, Dorothy Pearson, Sean Pearson, Mother Kyra Smith, Joanne Littlejohn, Mother Vera Drew, Nathan Lake, and Kiara Casey. For the week, the first week of uh, January, we had a very special birthday on the 3rd. And our very special birthday was Corey Weber, our drummer. <laughs> Woo! Happy birthday, Corey. If you would like to contribute to Abundant Love Ministries, there's many of ways to do this. You can give through our Cash App. Our Cash App name is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. That is capital A, capital L, capital C. You can give mobily through GiveLify. GiveLify name is Abundant Love Church. You can mail in your contribution. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 6577 here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The zip code is 46896, or you can drop it off here at the church. Our physical address is 2615 New Haven Avenue. If you would like to give a love token to our pastor, his cash app is dollar sign, all lowercase, Pastor GLB2. If you're in the Fort Wayne area, you can join us in our uh, regular worship services. On Sundays, we have Sunday School live stream at 9 a.m., followed by our Sunday School class here in the sanctuary at 9.50 a.m., and then, of course, our morning worship at 10.45 a.m. On Wednesdays, we have intercessory prayer starting at 6 p.m., followed by our Disciples Academy Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Now, if you miss any of the live streams, all of these are archived for you. You can uh, find those archives on our YouTube channel, capital A, capital L Ministries, or on Facebook, Abundant Love Church. These are all of our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Now in the hands of the praise team. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many glad to be alive on today? Hallelujah. Holly, we want to we want to acknowledge his presence on this morning. Amen. So it says we acknowledge your presence. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on in, take a seat and have it on. Praise God of Zion, Judas Lion. We acknowledge your presence, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you are welcome. You are welcome. Come on in, Come on in take a seat and have it on. Praise God of Zion, Judas Lion. We acknowledge your presence, oh Lord. Spirit. You are welcome. You are welcome. Come on in, come yeah. on in, take a seat and have it. I praise God of Zion, Judas Lion. We acknowledge your presence, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. you are welcome. You are welcome. Come on in, come yeah. on in, take a seat oh, and have it. I praise God of Zion, Judas Lion, Judas Lion. We acknowledge your presence, oh Lord. Take a seat. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Take a seat. Oh, Lord. We need your come presence on in. to come on in. Take a seat. Take come a seat. Come on in. Yeah. Take a seat. Oh, Lord. Come on in. Come on in. And take a seat. Take a seat. Be in the come presence on in. of Jesus. Take a 
spirit their shelter from the rain hallelujah lord send the healing for this we know there is a bomb in gilead hallelujah there is healing don't be discouraged don't be Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Know that God is nigh. Know that God is nigh. Stand still and look up. Stand still and look up. God is going to show up. God is going to show up. He is standing by. He is standing by. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. No. God is going to show up. God is going to show up. He is standing by. He is standing by. There's healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your sorrow. Hallelujah. Healing for your pain. Healing for your for your spirit healing for your spirit there's shelter from the rain there's shelter from the rain Lord send the healing Lord send the healing for this we do know hallelujah for this we know there is Yeah. 
your pain. Healing for your pain. Healing for your spirit. Healing for your spirit. The shelter. The shelter from the How many know you got to have a song in your heart? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This song has a purpose. This song has a purpose. This song has a plan. This song has a plan to prepare hearts for worship, to sing praises, to sing praises to I have learned how to sing through all the pain. Through all the pain. I've learned how to sing. I've learned how to sing. 
Standing in the rain. Standing in the rain, we cry, holy, 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 merciful and mighty. Humming songs of Zion. Humming songs of Zion. As I go. As I go. This gospel that I sing. This gospel that I sing. I really mean. I really mean. And I thank you. And I thank you. Thank you for my song. Thank you for my song. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He keeps me singing. He keeps me singing. I'm in songs of Zion. I'm in songs of Zion. As I go. This gospel that I sing, this gospel, this gospel that I sing, I really mean, I really mean, and I thank you, thank you for my song, could make it without you, Lord, and I thank you. Because you raised me. I see because you raised me. Where is the land? Because you feel me, come on. I sing because you feel me. Worthy is the Lamb. 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 I thank you, thank you for my song. And I thank you, thank you for my song. Thank you for my song. Couldn't make it without you, Lord. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for my song. Couldn't make it, couldn't make it without you, Lord. And I thank you, thank you. I really need the Lord. I really need you, Lord. And I thank you. Thank you for my song. Thank you for my song. Couldn't make it without you. Couldn't make it without you, Lord. And I thank you. Thank you for my song. Thank you for my song. I really need you, Lord. I really need you, Lord. And I thank you. For my song. Thank you for my song. 
Come on, lift your hands. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my song. Come on, lift your hands. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my song. One more time. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my song. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 How many know I thank you for my song? Think of the name of the song. How many know Jesus will? <laughs> Amen. Or sometimes all you gotta do is say, give it just a few. <laughs> <They're cut. laughs> all right. How many know Jesus will? Look at somebody say, Jesus will.
I know he will. I know he will. He said he will. He said he will. He'll fight my battle. He'll fight my battle. If I keep still. If I keep still. If I keep Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Jesus will. Jesus will. I know he will be because he said Oh, yeah. Hey. Get up there. Jesus I know he will. I know he will. He said he will. He said he will. He'll fight my battle. He'll fight my battle if I keep still. Because he said he would. Jesus will. Jesus will. How many know Jesus will? Look at somebody say, Jesus will. How many know he will? Look at your neighbor and say, I know he will. How many know he'll fight your battles? <laughs> Moses told him, said, if you hold your peace, amen, the Lord will fight for you. How many know all you have to do is hold your peace? Y'all remember that song we used to sing? They don't sing these anymore. Victory, victory shall be mine. See, see, sometime to wake the church up, you got to go back to old church. Amen. That's just a remix of if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, what'll be yours? It goes like this. It says, Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, one more time. Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory. Watch this. Watch this, symphony. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord to take up your weapons and flee for God has given me authority to walk on the enemy come on let's do a little walk oh walk on the enemy oh walk on the enemy for God has given me authority to walk on the enemy. One more time. Here we go. Walk. Walk on the enemy. Oh, walk on the enemy. For God has given me authority to walk on the end. Come on now. Put your hands on it. Come on. Put your hands on it. Put your hands on it. Put your hands. I'm going home. If I hold my peace, if I hold my peace, 
peace. Let the Lord fight my battles. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Look at somebody say, mine, mine, mine. Oh, mine, oh, mine. Look at somebody say, oh, mine. If I hold my peace and let the Lord. How many know? How many know that sometimes it's warfare to hold your peace? Amen. It takes the Holy Ghost sometimes to hold your tongue. Because sometimes we feel like something needs to be said. <laughs> Amen. All right. Clap your hands one more time. Amen. I'm just kind of just kind of rushing. I don't want to rush, rush, but I want to get through here. Amen. Because we want to serve the Lord's Supper today. We've got quite a few things to do. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Look at somebody and say, it's glad, I'm, I'm glad rather, to see you one more time. Now I want, you to, I want you to think, I want you to think for a minute. Can I have just a few more highs in this microphone? I want you to think for a moment. You never know when it's the last time you're going to see somebody. I have experiences in my life where my last occasion having a conversation with somebody if I had known it was my last conversation, I'd have said a lot of different things. And so what I've learned from those experiences is that you have to learn to live in the moment you're in. Amen. People think living life is going places and seeing things and doing things. That's a part of life. The truth of the matter is there's enjoyment in every moment if you care to look at it and take advantage of it. Amen. The old folk, we, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't sing anymore that the old church used to sing. Sometimes the mothers would come in the door singing, this may be my last time. Maybe my last time. I don't know. Then they'd come in shouting like that. Y'all know how old mothers used to shout like this. That sometimes they'd come in the door like that, talking about glad to be in the service. One more time meant, I don't know if I'll get another chance. And many times we take things for granted, just like things going to be there forever. But can I tell you something? Change is a part of life. And to really experience and enjoy life the way you should, you have to be able to make adjustments. And if you can make the proper adjustment, amen, life will run smoothly. Nobody gets good all the time. I got a couple of amens through here. I'm just declaring truth to you. After Job lost all his things and his wife looked at him and said, you know what? You just may as well curse God and die. It's so bad, we can't recover from this. Job looked at her and said, uh, you don't talk like my wife. I, I, you, 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 you sound like, and foolish doesn't mean silly here. Foolish means unbelieving. You sound like a woman who doesn't believe in God, is what he said to her. In fact, he said, shall we not receive, are you ready for this? Can you handle this? Good and evil from the hand of the Lord. Sometimes God give you good to make you feel good. And then sometimes God let unfortunate things happen to remind you, you can't live life without me. You need me. Every now and then, God will send you a reminder. Because sometimes we get enough money and we get things going right and things going in the right direction and feeling pretty good about ourselves. And then we forget that even in that good state, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so sometimes God just has to remind us that you need me. 
lift your hand and say, Lord, I need you. That's not just something I'm saying. I'm telling that's a truth. Amen. I can't, I can't make it, can't make it without you. The Bible says, I gotta, I gotta get this offering and get out of here. The Bible says that the Lord tries us with his eyelids. What that means is that he plays possum. You know what playing possum is, don't you? Acting like you sleep and you're not really sleep. Now, we know God don't sleep. The Bible says he neither sleep nor slumber. But if he's trying us with his eyelids, sometimes he'll act sleep, act like he don't know what's going on in our lives just to see how we will respond. Just about the time you get ready to give up, the Lord step in and say, I was here all the time. Why did you doubt? That's what he says to us. Can, can I call one witness? It ain't time to preach. It's time to get off. But let me call a witness. He sent the disciples away to the other side on the ship. He went up in the mountain and prayed all night. And the Bible said in the third watch, he started walking on the water. And one of the gospels record that he would have passed them by. Look at somebody say, don't pass me by. The Lord would have passed them by. They ran into a storm. They were toiling, trying to get the boat to shore. And Jesus, Jesus said, okay, well, if you can handle the storm without me, I'll just go on by. Finally, Peter and the rest looked up and seen him. Fear spoke first. It's a ghost. And God will always say something to calm your fear. Be of good cheer. It's I. It's me. They're still afraid. Peter said, well, if it's you, let me come on the water to meet you. One word answer. Come. I wonder what was going through Peter's mind just then. Everybody else in the boat was scared. But he stepped up, stepped over them, stepped out the boat. This is what I think he said. Hey, this works. Look at this. All right. He's walking to Jesus. About that time, a crack of lightning. Then he heard thunder. Then he seen a wave. But he didn't see Jesus. The Bible says he started to sink. Three-word prayer. Lord, save me. It ain't how many words you put in it. It's the sincerity of your prayer. The Bible said that Jesus came, pulled him up, and then asked him a question. Why did you doubt? And that's what the Lord is asking us when we get in tough places. Why do you, why do you doubt me? Why do you doubt my word? Okay, it's not your circumstances. It's not what's going on in your life at the time. It's what God has proclaimed. And when God has proclaimed something for you, Everything has to move out of your way for the word of God to come to pass. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? Amen. So, so the word is so vital to us, and, and we want to certainly get in that word. I'm supposed to be taking an offering right now. That's what I'm supposed to be doing, so I'm going to pause here now. I want you to prepare yourselves to give. Amen. I want you to start this new year out right. Amen. This year, the Abundant Love Church, we own the stairs. We're going higher and higher. Let me see your hand if you're with me. I'm not going to settle for what I got in 2021. I'm certainly not going to settle for what I got in 2020. Bigger and better things, amen? All right, if you have cash or check, you need an envelope. Amen. And Sister uh, Natasha has our children helping today. God bless the children. Uh, but, th but this year, we're going to appoint some adults to help with this. Amen. And if we can't get deacons, we're going to appoint some deaconesses. Yeah. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. <laughs> Amen. But everybody can't be one because they're qualifications for them. Yes, sir. They got to be faithful, trustworthy. They got to be present. They got to be full of the Holy Ghost. And they have to be trusted. 
Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Look at somebody and say, is that you? Amen. You want to be somebody that not only God can trust, you want to be someone that people can trust. Amen. All right. On that envelope, if you'd write your name and the date, today's the 8th, and your amount. If you need change, also um, uh, indicate that on the envelope, and they will make sure that you get your change. Uh, others that are going to give by your debit card or credit card, uh, Natasha has the card slider. She'll come to your location. And if you just kind of give her a hand signal now so that she can see you, okay, I've seen two or three hands go up. She'll come and take your offering that particular way. Then for the rest of us, if we're going to give by our mobile phone, uh, there are two ways to give. Uh, there's an app called Givelify. We can be found uh, as the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And you can make your contribution that way, or you can use Cash App. And our Cash App address is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. Those of you all that have given by Cash App before, it'll come up in your suggestions, and you'll see this little emblem right here on the pulpit with your uh, identifying as you give. Amen? Okay. All right. Everybody ready to give? Okay. All right. Whatever you have, if you have an envelope or a card or your phone, I want you to hold it up right now. I made a decision this year to stop praying routine prayers. What do you mean routine prayers? Some of us pray the same prayer over our food every time we eat it. Lord, thank you for this food we're about to receive, for the nourishment of our body. Take out any offense and let the strength we get from it be returned to your service. Amen. We know them by heart because we pray prayers that become regular to us. Prayer should never become regular. Prayer is always an opportunity to talk to God and to get something that you haven't had before. And so this year we're going to be... Um, honest and earnest in our prayers. I'm going to ask God what I want for you. All right, shall we pray, Father? In Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to give because it is. It's an opportunity and a privilege. The opportunity is there because if we're given, you gave us something to give. We thank you that you've given seed to the sower, but it's a privilege. And it's a privilege because everybody can't give to you. You didn't accept every offering that they brought to the tabernacle. If it was crooked or cross-eyed or lame, you sent them back with an unacceptable offering. So it's a privilege when we're able to give and you receive the offering that we give. Please know that we're not just giving monetarily, but we are saying thank you for all that you've done for us. All through 21, you took care of us, and now we're in a new year. And we're depending on you to do the same thing this year. Here's my prayer. I want you to prove to your people that your word is true. You said if we gave, that men would give to us. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. This week, this week, Lord, I want you to touch the heart of somebody that has a blessing for these parishioners, for these congregants. I want unexpected unexplained finances to come their direction and when they receive it I want you to tap their conscience and their memory that they know it's by the hand of the Lord let the gas bill be not as much as it's supposed to be let the water bill send a credit this month and work in their favor whatever you need to do to show your benevolence let it be done in Jesus name and the Lord's people said thank God amen and amen. All right, they're coming to receive your offering. You can do that uh, by the <clears throat> by your mobile phone, and everybody is given. Amen. Amen. All right, you all give me something to sing. Just don't make just don't make it too high. <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll work. Since we went back to old church, you can't be God given. You, you can be God giving, God given, no matter how you try, no matter how you try, 
for just as sure as you're living for just as sure as you are living as you are living and the Lord and the Lord is in heaven on high on high you know this part the more you give the more the more he'll give to you the more he'll give to you for just keep on giving because because it's really true that you can that you you can be be God given no matter how you try no matter how you try come on now clap your hands right there you're not clapping your hands clap your hands clap your hands in here amen all right God bless you isn't it good to be in the new year amen, amen. hasn't the Lord been good to us okay look at your neighbor say neighbor say you look good today Tell them, say, what's going on with you? <laughs> Amen. We say God is good all the time, and All the time God is what? Yes, he is. Amen. The Bible says that he's good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to how many generations? You know what? Look at somebody say, that includes you. Amen. Amen. You don't want the truth and the liberty that the truth offers to run out in your generation. That's why the Bible tells us, are you all ready for this? It says not only teach it to your children, it said teach it to your children's children, your, your grandchildren. Amen. What great things the Lord has done for us. I get the opportunity uh, to spend a lot of time with my grandsons <clears throat> amen and there are a lot of things that my mother and father taught me that I teach them amen they know about the Lord and y'all y'all if you watch any of the Facebook streams you all know we know how to have church amen we got a preacher and we got a singer and amen and we play instruments listen the Bible says you train up a child in the way he should go when he's older. Let me tell you what's wrong with the generation on the street now. There's a generation that hasn't been brought up in church. Oh, that don't make no difference. Well, let me tell you what happens when a generation forgets. The Bible says that Joseph was one of the greatest men in Egypt. And not just the Israelites, the Egyptians knew about the greatness of Joseph. But they stopped telling the story of Joseph. And then they got a Pharaoh on the throne who didn't know anything about Joseph. And that's the Pharaoh that put him in slavery. And sometimes our children are enslaved in things in the streets because we haven't told them the story about the church. Amen. I see us playing golf and in the park and driving our car on Sunday now. Amen. Back in the late 50s, early 60s, early 70s, that wasn't us. We were in church. They taught us to pray. Have you? Have you? Okay, I got I to gotta preach. Have you ever seen people get so nervous now when you ask them to pray? What you getting nervous about? You don't, have, you don't have a problem having a conversation with somebody. That's all prayer is. You just change the partner that you're talking to. You don't have to have special words to talk to God, but you do have to open your heart and tell God what's on your heart. Amen. So we taught them. We, taught, we were taught to pray. I learned how to pray not at church. I learned how to pray at home. My mother and my aunt would take us and put us on our knees right next to them and pray right next to us. And we learn to pray like that next to them. And so when my grandsons come over, anytime we get ready to go somewhere, we stop at the door. We join hands and we take turns praying. 
And it's remarkable the things you hear coming out of the mouths of little people when you've taught them to pray. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it because they pray. They pray for everybody. They pray for Papa and Nana and they just and they're sincere when they pray to God. And the Bible says that he accepts the prayers of children. Amen. You do yourself a disservice when you don't teach your children to pray. Amen. Amen. And then tell them to pray, you know, pray for you and pray for the home. Amen. Amen. All right. I got a few things to do here and then uh, we'll be going on. You all know that every January we go through a consecration. Amen. Amen. Look, somebody say it's consecration time. (laughs) Okay. Our consecration will start on tomorrow. It will run from the 20th to the 29th, 21 days. Amen. Now, let me preface this by saying, if you have a medical condition or if you have an immune system that requires you to eat, I want you to be full of faith, but I don't want you to be foolish. Okay. If you have to have food for medication, then you want to honor the medication and do what's right and not throw your body out of rhythm. Okay. But for every able, but but even if you have a compromised system, there are other ways for you to consecrate. Amen. There are other ways to sacrifice. And if you have problems, I can give you some suggestions, but if you can't do the dietary portion of it, uh, you can log and cut your television time. You can log and cut your phone time. You can limit the length of your conversations. You can extend the time of your prayer. So that you can read more verses, read more scripture. There, there are many things you can do to consecrate. All the consecration is, okay, it's not so much in what you take out and what you put in. It's sacrificing something to do something for God. Okay, and if you look at it like that, It doesn't become so dogmatic and legal as to what you do, but you're doing it to devote more time to the Lord. Amen. All right. They have copies of the uh, handout, and I'm going to ask if they can get them copies to them if you don't already have a copy. So three with consecration, um, and we'll start things. Uh, It changes every week. Okay. The first week, this week, starting tomorrow, we will remove red meat and processed sugar. Okay. So no steak, no meatloaf, nothing red. <laughs> no red meat. And no sweets. No cake, no cookies. Why y'all groaning already? Y'all sound like the children of Israel against Moses. Y'all murmuring already. You, you're just fresh out of Egypt. You ain't started yet and you're moaning. I'll stop that moaning. Don't start that. And don't load up today because it starts tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, so on, on tomorrow, <laughs> on, on tomorrow and the remainder of this week, we're going to remove red meat and sweets. Okay. Processed sugar. So now when I say processed sugar, you can use agava, you can use honey, you can sweeten things naturally, but any processed sugar we want to remove. Amen. Amen. I've been trying to lose weight. If you do this, you're going to lose some weight. Okay. Okay. So, so donuts and cookies and pies and cheesecake, and I'm so glad all them cookies that, that my Betty made for me, I'm so glad they gone. I don't hardly know what to do now. Amen. So we're removing sweets and we're removing red meat for the first week. Are you with me? Now, that leaves you with pork and chicken and fish. So if you have to have protein, you have to use alternative ways to get your protein. If you were getting it by red meat, you got to get it alternative ways. That's the first week. Everybody say first week. week. Amen. Second week, if you look on your sheet, we're going to remove chicken and poultry. Or poultry. So, so the chicken is gone, the turkey is gone, and the pork is gone second week, which means you can only have fish the second week. Got it? Amen. Everybody with me? Okay. Third week, we remove the fish. 
So the last week of our fast, you are on what's called pulse and water. Pulse is anything that grows from the ground. Fruits and veggies is what it is. And water. Now, for those of you all that can't get going without your coffee, uh, <laughs> okay, you, you, caffe you caffeine people with coffee, uh, I'm going to pray for y'all now. Okay, pray for you now. S but the last seven days, it is veggies, fruit, and water. Are you with me? Also give you a secret. If you include unsweetened cranberry juice that week, it helps cleanse the system. Toxins. It'll, it'll help move toxins, not sugared cranberry. I'm talking about the real McCoy stuff that make you pucker when you take a mouthful of it. <laughs> okay, that'll, that'll help. And um, the research is showing now that fasting is profitable for the body. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk later about regular fast days for us. But this is our consecration from the 9th to the 29th. And we'll end that consecration on the 29th. You may also see that there are three prayer times we will honor. Seven in the morning, noon, and seven in the evening. Okay. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Okay. Because it's too inconvenient sometimes to get to the church. But wherever you are, stop and pray. At 7 and well, Pastor, I don't get up till 8. Well, set your alarm clock for 7, pray, and then go back and sleep. Okay. Honor the prayer time. We, the, the intent is to have us all praying at the same time. Okay. 7 in the morning, 12 noon, 7 in the evening. The last thing, you'll see three slots there, and that's for prayer partners. I'm not going to assign your prayer partner. You're going to get your own prayer partner. And in that week, you're going to make contact with that prayer partner once a day. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to exchange a verse and exchange a prayer. So you're going to get a verse of scripture and say, here's the scripture that I have for you today. And you're going to quote that or read that verse to them. They, in turn, are going to do the same thing for you. This is the verse I have for you. They're going to read that for you. And then each of you now, now don't, don't, uh, you know, sometimes it's not how long your prayer is. It's a short little prayer. Okay. Okay. So you don't, you don't want to be on the phone praying for 30, 40 minutes. Amen. Anybody saying nothing in here? Amen. Amen. I want you to pray a nice, concise two or three minute prayer for each other so that we can move on through the day. In your prayer, include the growth of our church because that's what the Lord is dealing with me about our church. See, you don't grow in numbers until you grow spiritually. So we're going to put some things in place to help you grow spiritually this year. Amen? Yeah. Okay, so first week, <clears throat> no red meat, no sweets. Second week, no pork or chicken. Third week, no fish. That last week, we're on pulse and water. And then we will... Finish it on the 29th. Amen. You get a prayer partner. Get yourself a partner. Make, make contact with that partner every day. How, pastor? You can call them. You can text them. Well, you can, you can text the scripture. But I want you on the phone with the prayer. Okay. They need to hear your voice. Okay. All right. So you, is that all right? Are there any questions on our consecration? <clears throat> okay. Yes. Yes, you change prayer partners every week. So, so you get a prayer partner and you have them for seven days. And then the next week you get another prayer partner. And then the next week you get them. So you have three prayer partners, one for each week. Everybody got it? Okay. Can I say something else to you? Stop getting your buddy. Okay, stop getting your buddy. Stop getting your buddy. 
get somebody. Listen, you not only have to know people naturally, you have to know people after the spirit. Can I tell you how to get to know people? Listen to their prayer. When you, when you listen to the prayer of people, it'll let you know where they're coming from. Self-centered people pray, me, 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 me. Compassionate and sharing people say, us, 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 us. And praise us, go God, you, 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 you. Okay, you can get the nature of a person through their prayer because when you pray earnestly and you pray sincerely, you can't hide. See, we can hide. We can, do, we can do things with words when we're just talking to people. But when you're talking to God, don't you, don't you go talking no trash to God because God know your heart. Amen. So, so we, want to, we want to get, okay. Well, pastor, I don't meet people very well. Well, learn. Write them a note. <laughs> Send them a note. Say, will you be my prayer partner this week? Okay. Okay. You got to break. We have to come out of that shell you, you got to come out your shell. How are you going to be a witness for the Lord? And you can't talk to people. Okay. All right. Okay. They might not like me. They don't have to talk to you not to like you. They, that's just the way some people are. But you can, you can make an attempt. And you'll be surprised. Because sometimes we see people from a distance and think one thing about them. Until we get up close to them and get to know him or know her. And then we find out that they are a totally different person. Amen. Some people, will y'all get mad at me if I say this? Some people just have the persona that they don't look like they're happy. They don't smile a whole lot. Come on. Their eyes don't dance. They don't jump into conversations. They don't talk unless you say something to them. If you don't say something to them, they're not going to say nothing. And, and those kind of people have the tendency to look like they're not cordial. But sometimes it's not that they're not cordial. It's that they're cordial with people they know. And they're like that with you because they don't know you. But once they get to know you, then they'll open up. And you'll see who they are. Amen? Okay, all right. Y'all love y'all, Pastor? Okay, I'm, I'm glad y'all stopped moaning because. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me call your attention. I got a real short, I, this message has to be short because I want to serve communion and then I have a short meeting afterwards. So if I don't hit all the points, you all will get the gist of the message. Amen? Amen. All right, stand to your feet. Grab two passages of scripture with us. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. And we're going to join uh, that to Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13. Good to see Ray. Amen. Have you all noticed that a lot of people who are on our prayer list are here this morning? Yeah. That means God is a healer. Okay, for time's sake, I'm going to read it in your hearing. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7 says this. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Verse number seven says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. For he will have mercy upon him and to our God for because he will abundantly pardon Flip over to Jeremiah 29. Anybody flipping? I want to take this time to say abundant love. Y'all showed out in the 12 night revival. I'm telling you the truth. You all sounded like a 40 or 50 voice choir over at that church. Excellent, excellent ministry over in that place. And so I want to commend you all. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29 12 says this. Then shall you call upon me. Ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Verse number 13 says, and you shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with 
all your heart. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is blessed. My subject today is a successful search. Look at somebody and say, I'm searching, but I want my search to be successful. A successful search. And when we search for something or someone, and when we finally find what we're looking for, it leaves us as the searcher with feelings of achievement, like we've accomplished something and we have a feeling of accomplishment. And that feeling of achievement and that feeling of accomplishment is a feeling of success. Success, by definition, is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. Here in the beginning of the year, we have set goals. And when we have achieved the goal we have set, we can qualify it as success. Success means that you did what you set out to do. So whatever plan, whatever target, whatever aim you have put before you, you put plans and steps in place to get to it. And when you finally get to it, you have success. Amen. Amen. I have a, <clears throat> I'm going to share my, Step plan. My plan is to lose two pounds a week. I have a target goal. And my plan is, with exercise, and I don't want to call it diet. I want to say restricted eating. Because I'm still eating everything. I, 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 nah, I'm, let me talk for me. I don't know about you. Diets don't work for me. And the reason they don't work for me is because uh, the thing that I say I'm not going to eat, that's the thing I start craving. So I just decided to eat what I crave, but I restrict the portion. And with exercise and water and not so much sugar, I have, a two, I have two pounds per week. Those are my steps. But I have a target goal. And even though I may lose two pounds every week, it's not totally done or successful until I hit the target. Are you with me? Okay, so success is when you accomplish the purpose or the aim. It's when you hit the target. A search is successful when we find and locate what it is we're looking for. Okay, if you're like me, sometimes you lose things and while you're looking for one thing, you find something else that was lost. <laughs> Nobody saying nothing. Okay, well, let me give you an example. Uh, one year I had tickets to the um, Denver Bronco and the Indianapolis Colt game. And we had snow that year, and they postponed the game. And so, Ray, I hid the tickets. And when it came time for the game, I couldn't find the tickets. A year later, I lost my keys. And while looking for my keys, I found the tickets. I wasn't happy when I found the tickets. Amen. So, so and even though I found something, it wasn't a successful search because I didn't find what I was looking for. So it's only successful when you find and locate what it is you're looking for. Amen. Look at somebody and say, what you're looking for? Ain't that, what, ain't that what Kirk Franklin said? Yeah. What you looking for? What you looking for? Hey! Okay, all right. I just, okay, all right. I just had a moment. I just had a moment. I just had a moment. Okay. So, so it's successful when you find what you're searching for. It also gives us great satisfaction when we find something because we know that our efforts and the efforts of our search haven't been in vain. But our efforts have been rewarded because we have located it. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's very frustrating for me when I've lost something and I'm doing my best to find it and I can't find it. That's a, frust that's a frustrating feeling for me. And uh, just here last week, uh, there's a picture that I was looking for. 
and I haven't been able to locate it, or rather I couldn't locate it. I did finally locate it. It is, okay, relax here. I got so much going through my mind. This picture is so valuable to me because my mother for years told me that I looked like my paternal grandfather, but there were no pictures of my paternal grandfather. We didn't have any in our possession. But I had a sister who went on Ancestry.com and found a picture of the only picture I have of my grandfather. And so uh, I got a copy of it, but somewhere in the cloud and somewhere in the phone, the phone breaking down, I lost the picture. And it frustrated me when I couldn't find it. But then it came to my mind, just go back to the source and get it again. So that's what I did. So, but it's frustrating when you are looking for something and you cannot locate what you are looking for. Amen? So, so you get this great feeling of achievement and accomplishment when you find what you're looking for. And when you find it, there's an added benefit to it. Because now what you have found, you can use to your advantage. You can't use the keys as long as they're lost, but when you find the keys, then you can use them. You can open the door. You can open a a safe. You can start the car with the key. As long as you don't have the key, you can't do any of those things. I mean, well, not legally do any of those things, but, but when you find the key, it gives you access. So that key is a help and it's a benefit to you. When we find something, uh, it can be used to help and assist us. Our verses today in Isaiah and Jeremiah encourage us not just to seek the Lord, but it encourages us to have a successful search for the Lord. Do you know how many people look for God and cannot find him? So we don't want to be people that look for God and can't find him. We want to be people who know how to look for God so that when we look for him and seek him, we find him and our search is successful. Amen. Amen. The verses in Isaiah encourage us to seek the Lord. It tells us, seek the Lord. But the verses in Jeremiah give us more detail. He instructs us how to conduct the search. Because you know sometimes you can look for the right thing in the wrong way. Anybody saying nothing in here? Okay. I mean, depending on what it is and where it can hide will depend on how you look for it. Okay. When something is real small like a coin, you can look down in the cushions of the pillow. But if you... (laughs) But if you're looking for a bike, you shouldn't be looking in the cushions of the pillow. So depending on what you are looking for will help dictate how you look for it. See, there are a lot of people looking for God, but they're looking for him in the wrong places. That's why they don't find him. Anybody saying nothing in here? So a successful search for the Lord uh, not only motivates us with feelings of achievement and accomplishment and satisfaction, But we also get the added benefit that comes with finding God. See, when you find God and establish a relationship with him, you have the benefits of his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. So you get joy when you find the Lord. When you find the Lord and establish a relationship with him, he shares his power with you. These signs shall follow them that believe. And then he designates what kind of power you have. You speak with new tongues. You lay hands on the sick. You can drink poison things and they shall not harm you. The Bible says that you'll be a witness with the power that he shares with you. There are things you cannot do on your own, but when you meet up with the Lord I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me he'll not only share his power with you he'll share his favor with you and when God shares his favor with you you get things you don't deserve amen he'll share good things with you and then last but not least he'll share his guidance with you And when we get to places where we don't know which way to go, God will share his wisdom and tell us which way to go. When you get to the fork in the road and both of the forks look good and you're trying to decide which way to go, an established relationship with God, as you acknowledge him, the Bible says he'll direct your path. 
Amen. That means you don't have to stand there at the fork of the road scratching your head. All you got to do, if you can seek God and find God, you can ask God and then God will tell you which way to go. Are you with me? So it's a good thing to find the Lord. Amen. But the prophet Jeremiah gives us a guarantee. And he says to us that we should seek the Lord and he tells us how to conduct a successful search and find the Lord. In verse number 13 of Jeremiah 29, he says, you shall seek me and find me. That's a guarantee. That's the word of God. God says, if you look for me, I'll let you find me. Back in the day, we used to play hide and seek. Although we played another game called chase. And what chase was, it was hide and seek. But instead of one person being it, we divided up into teams. So there was a team of four or five people looking, and there was a team of four or five people hiding. But sometimes somebody on the searching team had the interest on somebody on the hiding team. And so the person who was hiding would tell the person who was searching where they were. Ain't nobody saying nothing to hear? And God is just like that. He's not hiding to stay out of your sight. He's hidden because he wants you to seek him, but he also wants you to find him. He's hiding from you, and then he's telling you where he is. Amen, somebody. So, so in verse number 13, he says, you shall seek me, and you're going to find me. He guarantees that our search will be successful and that we will find the Lord. Verse number 12, though, gives us instructions how to search. See, you can't search on your own terms. You have to search like God has told you to search. Anybody with me today? Here's what he says in verse number 12. He says, then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. I'm halfway done. He instructs us that the Lord will hear us, hearken to us. If we do two things, call upon him and go and pray to him. Everybody say call upon him. And go and pray to him. One more time. Call upon him. And go and pray to him. Amen. Can somebody turn this heat down? Please. So we will find the Lord if we call upon him and go and pray to him. Jeremiah assures us that God will hear us. He will honor our prayers as long as we meet the condition of seeking and searching for him with all our hearts. So here's the way it works. Okay. You can't half-hearted look for the Lord. You got to put honest and earnest effort into it. And when you get honest and earnest and sincere about finding the Lord, you got to call upon him and you got to go and pray for him. That's how you search for the Lord. You got to call on him. And then you got to go and pray to him. Say one more time. Call upon him and pray. Or should I say go and pray? Okay. The word call by definition is to cry out to attract or summon someone's attention. So when it says call the Lord, what you're doing, you're trying to get his attention. You're trying to take and get his attention to turn from wherever it is towards you. Amen, somebody. But when you add the word up on, or we say in modern day, call on, to call on or to call upon someone is to summon their attention, not just to get their attention, but your intention is to get help from the person that you're calling on. You all catch that? I can get your attention, but if I need help from you, then I, got, I not only have to get your attention, I have to make a request when I get your attention. So I can't just say, hey, if I, if I say, hey, that'll get your attention. But if I say, hey, I need you to help me with this. Then we narrow down the attention to the assistance that I need. Are you with me? So when we talk about seeking the Lord, y'all ready? We're talking about getting the Lord's help. 
We're not talking about just being in his face and, 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 you know, having his attention, him look at us. We're talking about the assistance that God can give to us. We must call upon the Lord, watch this, with our admission that we need God. Let me tell you something. Anybody who knows that they need God are chasing God. Sometimes people say they need God, but they don't act like they need him. Sometimes he's a convenient God. When I need to be healed, I call you. When I need a bill paid, I call you. When my car broke down and I need a ride, I call you. But what about when things are going good? How's your relationship with God when you got money in the bank, money in your pocket, and no pain in your... Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? No pain in your body. So, so, so to call up on the Lord means that we're calling God for help. And in that help, we have to admit that he has something that we can't do by ourselves. I'm calling you, God, because I have some things in my life that without your help, I can't get it done. I'm calling on you because there's some things in my life right now. My mother's gone. My father is gone. My sisters and brothers can't handle it. My church members who I love dearly don't have the power to do what I need done right now. In fact, I need a miracle. I need a couple of miracles right now. And I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Amen. That's why I'm calling. That's why I'm calling up on you. I'm crying out to you because I got situations. I got circumstances in my life. I got pressures. I got stresses. I got things that are trying to close in on me and overthrow my faith. But if I call, look at somebody say, call upon the Lord. If you call upon the Lord, he'll come not only with his presence, but he'll give you what you need. Amen. And if you really understand that you need the Lord, let me tell you how you need the Lord. Take your hand and raise it up over your hand. Over your head, rather. Now, I want you to think you may have thought that you did that by yourself. But the Bible says in him we live and in him we move and in him we have a if it wasn't for the Lord, you couldn't have raised your hand over your head. Now do this inhale and exhale. You need the Lord. The Bible said that God breathed into your nostrils the breath of life and you became a living soul. That's why I let everything that have breath, parenthetically, everything that has God's breath, praise the Lord. And so the Bible says in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Jesus said in St. John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do Look at somebody say, you can't do anything without the Lord. Wait, let, wait, let me say it like the scripture said. Say, you can't do nothing without God. Well, I'm going to buy me a house, not without God. I'm going to get me a car, not without God. Well, I ain't serving God, but the Bible said he reigns on the just and... Amen. It's the benevolence, it's the grace, it's the goodness of God whereby he'll give it to you. And so we have to call upon the Lord with the recognition that he's our only source and he is our sole supplier. Life comes from the Lord. The Bible says in him was life and that life was the light of men. He lights every man that comes into the world. That means nobody lives except God wills it. You are here today because God in the eternal and dateless past made a decision for you to be here. It has nothing to do with your mother and your father. Your mother and your father are only the instruments, the vehicles that God used to get you here. You are here because God in his wise providence looked in this wide whole earth and knew that you were necessary. And that's why God put you here. Look at somebody and say I'm necessary that's right God don't make no junk God made a creation I am fearfully and wonderfully made and even if you don't think I'm worth much God does and I think more of what God thinks about me than you 
And so we got to call upon the name of the Lord. And when we call upon the name of the Lord, we got to call him out of desperation. We got to call him out of need. We got to call him out of recognition that without you, I can do nothing. We used to sing a song, without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I would, I would fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. And so we got to call on the Lord. Look at somebody say, call upon the Lord. That means you got to make time to call him. That means you got to use your voice to call him. That means you have to direct the sound God's direction so that God can pay attention to you. Hello, somebody. And after we call upon the Lord as I close, we have to not only get his attention, but we have to go and pray. Look at somebody say, go and pray. Now, don't miss this. Notice that the verse doesn't just say pray. It says go and pray. Not that we can't pray anywhere or at any time because we can. But the word go means leave or depart, which means when you seek the Lord, if you've been in a place where you haven't been seeking the Lord, you got to leave that place. You got to move to a mindset. You got to move to a heart set. You have to move to a new attitude, a different paradigm if you're going to go from not seeking the Lord to seeking the Lord. Look at somebody say, time to move. Yeah, you got to pack up stuff. You got to pack up your attitude. Sometimes you got to pack up friends. Sometimes you got to pack up places if you're going to seek the Lord. Move means that you got to move to a more suitable place to pray to God. You got to go to a different mindset if you're going to talk to God. You got to go to a different mindset if you're going to seek God. You got to go to a different mindset if you're going to chase God and pursue God. In fact, Jesus said, when you pray, move enter into thy closet and when you go into the closet thy father would see you in secret he shall reward you openly look at somebody say move to prayer yes you got to move to prayer and when we pray we have designated places that are designed for prayer now don't get me wrong you can pray in the car you can pray in your house you can pray in your bedroom and those are okay places to pray but God has designated some places for you to put your prayer up all right put your seatbelt on because this can be kind of rough going through here Jesus said my house shall be called That means it's designated for you to reach God and touch God. And sometimes people are trying to find God everywhere but at his house. Let me tell you something. If you ever want to catch up with me, let me tell you the best place to catch up with me. There's only two of them. You can catch me over at the, well, I should say three of them. You can catch me at the church or you can catch me at the YMCA or you can catch me at home. Incidentally, I'm not at the YMCA every day. Incidentally, I'm not at the church building every day. But if you want to catch up with me, you got to look at home. You got to look where I live. And if you want to catch up with God, ain't nobody saying nothing in here. I know he works at the ball game, but that ain't where he resides. I know he works at the community center, but that's not where he resides. I know he works over in the neighborhood, but that's not where he lives. He got a house And he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And sometime to seek the Lord, you got to go to the house. Look at somebody say, go to the house. Go to the house. Why do you want to find him at the house, Pastor? Because he store all his stuff at the house. Everything that he owns is in. You know the difference between a house and a home? The only difference between a house and a home is that your stuff is in it. Because this and be, you know, this place can be home and you can move over here, but it's not home. But if you start taking your stuff from here and start putting it over here, this place becomes, look at somebody say home. Jesus said, my, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. And it's the place where we offer our prayer. We go to the house. We can, we, 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 we can go to the temple. We can go into the sanctuary and do like David said. We can behold the beauty of the Lord and we can make inquiry in his temple. That means in church, you can ask the kind of questions that will answer the circumstances and the 
problems that's going on in your life. Uh, John said it like this as I close this message. He said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in the Lord our God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Anytime you know the word of God and you ask something according to the word of God, it is the plan and the pleasure of God to perform his word for you. And so this is the confidence we have. Our confidence is in the word of God that if we ask, do you hear me? Anything according to his will. The Bible says he not only hears us, but uh, whatever we have asked for according to his will, he hears us. And and we know that if he hears us, uh, that he will give us the petitions that we have asked of him. That means that once you understand the power of prayer and the power of the word of God, you ask God for things according to his will. And you should have confidence that God is going to do exactly what he said. And and that's why the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Uh, It says, seek and ye shall find. It says, knock and it shall be open unto you. And then you need to understand that the next verse just confirms what verse number seven says. See, The Bible in St. Matthew 7 and 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Shall means 100%. That means when you ask God for something, God is going to give it to you. And then it said, seek and ye shall find. That means if you seek the Lord, you are going to find him. And then it said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. And and Jesus really wanted you to understand the power of those verses. Uh, And so what he did with verse number seven, uh, he made verse number eight the twin verse. Uh, He made verse number eight the answer verse. Uh, And he says in verse number eight, for everyone that asketh receiveth, uh, and everyone that seeketh finds, and, and everyone that knocks it's open unto them and and so if you want your search to be successful uh, if you want to find the Lord in his power uh, and if you want to find the Lord in his majesty uh, if you want to find the Lord in his benevolence uh, if you want to find God to where he'll come when you call him and if you want to find God that he'll answer when you talk to him uh, you gotta call on the Lord uh, and when you call Call on the Lord. Uh, Somebody said he'll answer prayer. Uh, The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Uh, And it's time for you uh, to open your mouth uh, and start talking to God. Uh, It's time for you uh, to make your petitions uh, and your requests known. Uh, It's time. Look at somebody say it's time. It's time to use your voice. It's time to use your voice. Y'all ain't gonna like me. But we didn't got so used to asking people to pray for us. I got a problem in my home. Pastor, pray for my home. I got sickness in my body. Pastor, pray for my body. I got a problem on my job. Pastor, pray for my job. I got a problem with my spouse. Pray for my spouse. And I want you to understand something. Pastor is always willing to pray for your concerns and your requests. But let me tell you how it works. Instead of using my credit card for all of your prayers, you need to put a credit card a prayer credit card in your own pocket and you don't have to call pastor when you need something from the Lord you can pull out your own card I love my own card it got my own name on it I got my own account in it so when I pray to God when I pray to God When I pray to God, I use my own account. Now, that don't mean I don't use some other accounts. 
Amen. Every, other, every week, Gary and I go out to eat. We have lunch together once a week. We take turns. One week, I pay. The next week, Ray, he pay. And I'll be watching where he chews. Because if I'm choosing all places like this, and he choosing all places like that, Amen. So if we eat a steak on me, we should eat a steak on. Oh, I should, I should stop talking. I should stop talking about red meat right now, shouldn't I? Well, if we eat, we if we eat a salmon steak, <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying that you have the ability to search for God. What I'm getting ready to tell you, a lot of pastors won't tell you. Because a lot of pastors want the people to stay dependent on them. But let me tell you what happened when Jesus died. There was a veil between the holy of holies and the holy place. The Bible says that when Jesus died, that veil rent, tore from top to bottom. Now, number one, it tore from top to bottom because God tore it. And then... What had been off limits to the people was now accessible. You all hear me? You don't need to come to me to get your sins forgiven. Come on. Back in the day, if you did something wrong, they made you stand up and apologize to the whole church. Ooh, good Lord. You, you will empty a church out if you try that now. But because that veil has been torn, it means that all of us have access to God by Jesus Christ. There's one man, one mediator between God and man. It is the man, Jesus Christ. Beloved, I would that you sin not. Certainly my desire that you don't sin. But if any sin. We have an advocate. We got a mediator with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins if you can find him. You can't come to God on your terms. Well, I'll come when I get ready. That's, that's, the old folks said that's the cart before the horse. Because if you pray when you get ready, that means you the boss or the Lord. A lot of the church has learned that Jesus is Savior, but we haven't learned that he's Lord yet. Well, I don't know what Lord means. Yes, you do. If you got a supervisor at work, you know what it means. Your supervisor come and say things that you don't like. And if you want your job, you obey. Whether you like it or not. Because that's the power the Lord has. Can I be real? And God tell us to do things we don't like. And when the Lord tells us to do something that we don't like, you have to discipline your emotion and your will. I, 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 let me tell y'all another story. I'm done. About the Lord making you obey. <clears throat> I had a relationship with a woman in the church I came from that was strained for years. This woman was my superior in the auxiliary. Just, I don't, I don't want to say she didn't like me, but we never found common ground to agree. And one evening at rehearsal, I went out of character. I grabbed the national manual 
and I got control of the floor in a meeting and I started reading the manual. Yeah, y'all pastor. Y'all pastor did that about 35 years ago. And every time she would say something, I would say, nope, I got the floor. I humiliated her in that meeting. Y'all don't hear me. And instead of making things better, that only made our relationship worse. It was, it was, after that, it was, it was war. <laughs> and the woman contracted cancer. When it got to the last stage, they put her in the hospital for her last days. At the same time, my mother was hospitalized three doors down from that lady with an intersection. The old Parkview had intersections of halls. and Two doors this way was her room and two doors this way was my mother's room. So this evening, I went up to see my mother. When I went to see my mother on the way in, I seen her husband. But he had his back to me, so I slipped by him around to my mother's room. Stayed in there and talked to her and prayed with her. And then when it was time to leave, you had to go through this intersection and around the corner to get to the elevator. Couldn't get to the elevator or the stairs without going through this intersection. <clears throat> when I came out of my mother's room, her husband was standing right in the middle of that intersection. So I just kind of tipped back in the room, said, I'm going to wait. I, can I be, will y'all let me be transparent? I was saved. I was preaching then too. I slipped back in the room. I said, well, I'm just going to kind of wait until he, he gone. I kept peeking around the corner. He wouldn't get out of there. So finally he turned his back to me. And I said, well, I'm going to sneak by him while his back is turned. So here I am sliding down the hall trying to get to that intersection. And when I got to the intersection and went to turn, he did like this. He said, oh, Elder Bush. He said, my wife is here. He said, will you come pray for her? The same lady that I've been. I needed to find God and in a hurry. Or go in there with a worthless prayer. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Sometimes you got to look with all your heart. I'll never forget it. I prayed a, just a very brief prayer. I said, Lord, I know how I've treated her isn't right. And I'm sorry for how I treated her. Now, I said this in myself while I'm walking behind him to the lady's room. This lady scowled at me every time I seen her. She never smiled at me. When I entered the room, she was laying in the bed with her back towards the door. And her husband said, honey, say, look who's here. And when she turned around and seen me, I've never seen a woman smile as broad as that woman's. She smiled. She was genuinely glad to see me. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me, because it's happened to me on three different occasions. Sometimes people can't die and go to heaven until they settle certain things. We both got an opportunity to settle something. And then shortly after that, she died and went on. What are you saying? I'm saying that when you seek God, you got to come clean. You can't hold nothing. You can't hold nothing against anybody. Even if you got something, you got to be transparent and admit it's there. Because the thing that you don't admit is the thing that God can't work on. But your search will be successful if you call on him. And your search will be successful if you go and pray. Sometimes you got to get away from people. Are you ready for this? Sometimes you got to get away from people to pray to God. The old folks said, steal away. Sometimes you need to turn that phone off, turn that TV off. Anybody saying nothing? 
Pastor, I called you. You didn't pick up the phone. It ain't always because I didn't hear the phone ring. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm down in prayer, if I haven't turned it off and it ring, I'm not answering that phone. Why? Because this is time that I've set aside to seek God. Because I've got some things in this day that I cannot handle if God ain't with me. And that's not just me, heads about. That's you too. There's some things you can't handle without God. You can't keep working with them kind of people without God on your side. You can't keep peace with people without God. You can't make major decisions for your life without God. End up with a shipwreck when you try to go on your own. So I want to pray with you. In this consecration, we're going to look for God and we're going to find him. We're going to find him in ways that we haven't found him heretofore. We're going to find him because we need his help. Then we have God's word that if we seek him, we can find him. I want to pray with you if you decided to intensify your search. Not that you don't know God, but you want to know him in a better way. In a more powerful way, in a more intimate way, if that's the sentiment of your heart, I'm going to ask you to stand right where you are. I have to hurry and pray here because I want to serve communion. The first thing I want to say to you is that this is not going to be like all those church programs and conferences and workshops that you see. That a man just comes and lays his hands on you and automatically you have it. That's not the way this works. This works by establishing a routine and consistency. See, seeking the Lord is not something you do one time. It's a lifestyle. You got to be looking for God every day you get up. And it's got to be fervent. It has to be intense. That prayer said, that prayer that Jesus modeled for us said, give us this day, only this day, our daily bread. You have to have a search for God every day you get up. You got to call on him. You got to admit that you need his help. And you got to pray. And if you can call on him, be open with him and pray earnestly to him. You'll not only find him, but you will secure the help you need to get through what you're going through. You have an enemy who's trying to stop you. You can't battle him by yourself. And when you try to battle him by yourself, he defeats you. You need somebody to help you fight. Sometimes we fight in people, sometimes we fight in places, sometimes we fight in circumstances, and sometimes we're fighting ourselves. Sometimes it's not somebody else that's the problem. Sometimes it's us. But God has the power to help you. Lift your hands to God. Father, in the name, the matchless, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, People are on their feet with their hands raised. They're not raised because I told them to raise them. They are raised because they are looking to you. They want to be closer to you. They want to come to a place, an intimate place with you. So that they can feel your presence, feel your power. And have your assistance. Thank you that you're a high priest that can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. But you've been tempted in every place like as we are. And you're able to secure, you're able to help and aid those of us that are tempted, that have troubles, that have trials, that have challenges. You're able to help us that are depressed and frustrated and despondent and negative. You're able to help us because you know how we feel. Because you know how we feel. You're willing to come alongside. 
and be a strength to us. Here is my prayer now for these that are standing on their feet with their hands raised to you. I want you to raise motivation and appetite in their heart. I want the appetite for God to raise in their spirit. I want them to hunger and to thirst after the things of God. Not the world, not money, not popularity, not status, but the things of God. Put the things of God in our mind, in our heart. Help us to hide the word in our heart so that we can walk a worthy life. A worthy life whereby you will be pleased. Now, God, I pray that you stretch out your hand and you touch everyone in Jesus' name. Now, those of you with your hands up, I want you to have a conversation with God. Tell Lord, I need your help. Tell him I need your help. I can't do this without you. You are a full fountain. I'm just an empty pitcher. Fill my cup and let my cup, let my cup overflow. Let me, let me live in the overflow of your blessings. Help me not to draw back, but help me to pursue the Lord. Help me not to draw back. Help me to put my hand to the plow, not looking back. Put a new routine in my life. Help me to meet you regularly in prayer. Hear my voice early in the morning. You said if we call on you early, that we would find you. I pray, oh God, that you would open all of our hearts so that we can seek you. In Jesus' name, come on now, open your mouth and bless the Lord. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, open your mouth. That's what I'm talking about. Open your mouth. This is a different year. This is a time to use your voice. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Come on, there it is. Come on, there it is. Come on, there it is. Come on. Come on, reach, reach. Seek him. Come on, seek him. Come on, seek him. Come on, seek him. Seek him. Come on, seek him. Come on, seek him, seek him. Seek him, seek him. Come on, don't let him go, don't let him go. Don't let him go, bless my soul. Bless my soul, Lord, bless. Bless my soul, bless my soul. Bless my soul, Lord. Come on, tell him, bless my soul. Tell the Lord, bless my soul, bless. Come on, here it is, here it is. Here it is, here it is. Bless my soul. Come on, open your mouth, call him. Call him. Come on, you call him, call him. Bless my soul. Come on, now clap your hands in here, everybody. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Everybody say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask the mothers, if you, you all may be seated, I'm going to ask the mothers if they would prepare the table for us glory to God look at somebody say we going higher this year amen I want to be like Daniel I want him to answer me before I call 